Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to add text to your poster. So we've already got our background. I've selected the gradient style background, which I showed you in an earlier video how to do. You might have selected just a plain background and that's fine. Um, but I'm going to work with this one for my example for my singing in the rain poster. So just to remind you, if you go over to layers, you've got your background layer, which we made white at the very beginning when we made our file. We have our gradient fill layer, or if you've just got a colour fill layer, or perhaps you've got a pattern fill layer, that's fine. That should be sitting there. Again, these eyes means that both are visible. If we remove the eye, it takes away the layer. Okay, so we are going to create a new layer and work on top to make sure that if we do make a mistake, we're just deleting the layer and we're not deleting the whole thing. So, in order to add text, we go down to this toolbar down the left hand side and you'll see a nice big T, T for type tool. And if we click on that, it gives us an extra menu along the top underneath our main menu. And this is the type tool menu. So here is where you'll find all the different types of fonts that you can use. So these ones are all preloaded in here and you might find one that's suitable for what you're after or you might have already found the font that you're wanting to use on the free font websites and you've downloaded them to your computer. And if you have done that, that's fine. We then click on load font and you're wanting to find where your fonts are, okay? So I have a separate folder with some fonts in here and I'm going to choose one to upload. So I'm going to choose this Codex Italic font. So if we make sure it's either .ttf or .otf, that means it's a font file and it can be uploaded. So if we click on open, it gave us a little alert there to tell us that it's been added to the fonts. And I know that one's called Codex, so I'm going to start to search for it. And it gives me my Codex option here. Now, as I said before, you don't have to load a font. You can use maybe one of them that's already in the preloaded pre fonts. But I'm going to use my font that I have just loaded. And it gives me the options for that, okay? So regular italic, which is the one I've just loaded, I'm going to choose and then the size of the font. So we can make it bigger or smaller, um, depending. Now, remember our poster's A3, which is quite big. So you might want to start with a bigger size text. Make sure your type tool is there and we click on it on your page. Now, when you click on it, you will see it brings up text layer. It's saying text layer two for mine. It should maybe say text layer one if it's your first one. I've had a little um, demonstration of this before I videoed it. So that's why it's saying text layer two. Now, please make sure your layer is above your gradient fill layer. That means that whatever we work on is at the top. If we were to move this to underneath, you see we can't see the type tool section because it literally is underneath this layer and we won't be able to see it. And you're literally just clicking and dragging and moving them around. So we're wanting to make sure our type tool um, text layer is at the top. Then we're wanting to type Oh, that's going to give me a new layer because I've moved off of that. So let's just delete that one. So if we click again, text layer two, and we're wanting to type our text. So I'm going to have singing. Oh, not doing very well. Singing in the rain. In fact, I'm going to just have singing in that. I'm going to do rain differently. Okay, so already I can see that's too small for my A3 paper. So if I highlight that, I can see that the options only take me to 150. But you can manually put in the size up here. So I've just put in 300, I want it to double, click enter, and it's made it bigger for me. Then we go over here to our move tool. And making sure that we're still on the layer, we can just then move this font around to see where we might place it. So I'm going to go with here. And you can see the little red bar that appears. That tells me that that is centred 
to my A3 paper. Okay, I'm not too happy with the colour. I'm going to make sure I'm on that layer and I'm going to highlight that. And the colour for your text is back up here in your text menu. If I click on that, it's, it's at black. I'm maybe wanting to change it. I can choose maybe a white. Maybe I want to go maybe just a really light blue. It might be quite nice. Let me try the light blue. Click OK. And it's giving me a light blue option. Now I'm not too keen on that italic, so I'm going to change that to just regular. And I think I might actually, it's still too bright for me. I'm going to change this to maybe a more muted blue colour, but still lighter, but just not as bright. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, so that's my text here for singing in the, and again, if we hide the eye, it removes it. Okay. And I'm wanting to do rain as a different word. So make sure that I go on to the type tool. I'm going to just stick with the same font and stuff just now because I'll look to then choose it. And if I click on the page, you can see it creates a different layer for me, text layer three. And I'm going to write the word rain. But I'm wanting to make this a lot bigger. So I'm going to go as big as, I'm going to double it again, up to 600. In fact, I might even go more because I want it to be really big on the page. Okay. Now, I am quite keen for the top section, the singing in the, to fit neatly above that word rain. So if you go back to the singing in the layer, so the top layer that I worked on, and click on characters. In fact, I'm going to bring out layers and characters. Can I do that? Let's see. I'm not sure if it will let me. No, just characters. OK. So we're wanting to make sure we're on that layer. We're going on to the type tool and we're going to highlight that. You can see this character options here, which is CHA gives me lots more um, different options for this, okay? So we can change our size, like the height of our text. So if I show you that, for example, it makes it really tall or sort of really small. Okay, I'm going to go back to 100 for that. Or here is our spacing, okay, so it makes it closer together. And that's kind of what I was keen on. So if I move this more to here, and again, oh, we've set a new layer, we don't want that. I'll delete that layer by dragging it down to the little bin. We're wanting just to highlight this one again. So maybe about there, and I might make it a little bit shorter, not that way, this way. Maybe actually if I bring this down to 280 in size, let's see if we're nearly there. That looks a lot neater, doesn't it? Now, if you wanted to um, view it a little bit closer, you can go to view, zoom in, and it'll allow you to sort of see what you're working on a little bit clearer. Okay, so the two tools that we've mostly used there is our type tool, again, working with the type menu across the top, where we're choosing our fonts, choosing the style of the font and again the size. We've checked that we're on separate layers over here 
and it's the character, C-H-A, character. And that will allow us to bring the spacing a little bit closer together or change the height of the letters. Okay, and it also lets you change the size from here as well, just in case you wanted to do that. So that has given us two layers. We've got the rain text, which we can hide. And we've got the singing in the again, which we can hide. So I'm quite happy with that just now. Close that over and make it a little bit so we can go to view, zoom out to fit it on the page. And we can see how that looks. Okay. If we were wanting to change one of the fonts, I'm thinking rain, I'm going to make it a little bit more um, of a sort of block font. So let's go on here. We're going to take out the word codex so I can see all the different variations. I'm wanting to make it a little bit more chunkier. That's maybe too chunky. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Don't like that one at all. Let's try something else. Um, I'm going to go with this one. I quite like that one actually. That's quite nice. And I'm just moving it again to make sure it's centered. Now I might want to add a drop shadow onto this to make it look more 3D. Okay. And the way to do that is we're wanting to create two of these layers okay so if we right click on the layer that we want to duplicate we can see we have an option here to duplicate layer so if we click on that that gives us two copies so it's got the first one and the second one and the second one is immediately behind it so we are wanting to drag that so it's underneath if we hide the top one so that all we're seeing is the second one and we want to change it to make it a little bit darker. Okay, so we're on this layer, the copy layer, and we're wanting to highlight it and we're going to change it to make it a darker blue to do a drop shadow. Click OK. Oh, did that change it? No. Let's see, why is it not changed it? Oh, sorry, my error. So, so now we're thinking about, we're wanting to change it. Oh, stop. Stop. Start. Okay, I'm thinking I might change the word rain to make it into more block lettering so it stands out a little bit more. So I'm wanting to make sure that layer is highlighted and we're wanting to select the text. And again, we're going up to the type or text um, menu up here. And we're going to look for a sort of more blocky, thicker font to make it stand out that little bit more. Um, let me see if I see anything that I like. I quite like this one. Okay. So I've changed the text, I'm just wanting to move it again so it sits nice and neat centred and underneath there.
Okay, and I might want to, again, make the singing in the spread out a little bit more so it goes to either side. So that was this option here. So let's see if we just make it a little bit longer. That sits nice and squared on top of there. Great. Okay, so I think the word rain could do with um, maybe a drop shadow to make it stand out even further. So in order to do that, we need to create a duplicate layer. So when you click on the rain layer or the whatever font or sorry text that you have for the layer that you want a drop shadow on and you right click on that layer, it gives us an option to duplicate layer. So click on duplicate layer and it will give you a copy of that layer. Now to create a drop shadow, you usually want to make it darker. So I'm selecting my copy layer and I'm going up to my text menu again at the top and I'm selecting the color and I'm wanting to select a darker color to make my drop shadow. I might actually, black might be too much, maybe go sort of dark navy kind of color. Press OK. Now you can see because the rain copy, the copy layer was on top of the main layer, that's why we're seeing that change to dark. So if we switch it round, put that one behind it, then you'll see that it's hidden beneath the light blue. So then you're wanting to slightly move your layer around to get a nice drop shadow at whatever angle that you're thinking of. I quite like that actually. Okay, now the moment you start moving both these layers around, you're going to lose that drop shadow. So the best way to do it is to select both by clicking Command or Option, depending on if you're on a Mac or PC, to highlight them both. And then you're pressing the lock. And that will lock those two layers together. You can see the sort of lock that appears at the side. And that means if you go back to the Move tool, we should be able to... Oh, no, it's not letting me move them together. Why is it not letting me move them? Oh, this one. No, it's not letting me move them. Oh, sorry, we don't need to lock them. If we lock them, they stay in place. So actually, if we just select them together at all times, they can be moved around. Okay. Another thing you can do for a nice effect is change the opacity, which means sort of um, how opaque the colours are. So if I remove the drop shadow layer, for example, so that you can't see it, and we have the first layer that we worked on, which is the main text. And if we select duplicate layer, and then we bring this layer underneath, I have a bit of an idea of what we could do with this. And then if we again copy that layer, and say duplicate layer, and bring this layer underneath, okay, We've got three letters. We're wanting to change the opacity. So if we click here, you can see how we can make those words at text just disappear by changing the opacity. Go into the second one. Okay, make it look like it's getting a little bit more faded. In fact, I'm going to take the last one I did, which is that one, and I'm going to duplicate that again. And I'm going to pull it again underneath. Make sure the spacing looks OK. And I'm going to make that even more opaque. So it's just literally fading into nothing. I'll duplicate this. Oh, no, this one one last time. Make sure I'm on the Move tool to drag underneath. And then I'm going to make that even more opaque. So we're at 17%. I'm going to bring that down to 7%. 
duplicate it one last time and it's these little details that will really add to your poster design and I'm going to bring that right down so it's just barely visible at 3% Okay, and I think that's quite nice. It kind of mimics rainfall, sort of darker, getting lighter, till we hit the bottom. Okay, so now you can see we've got all these um, our layer sections looking really messy. We've got all these different copies. You get you'll end up getting confused which one's which if we just start to move ones away. Maybe these ones you can see which one's which. Okay, but if you're happy with all of them and you don't want to make any further changes, you can select them all, go to image, no sorry, layer, and select merge layers. And that will merge all of those layers together that you've highlighted in one. So if you click on it, it will hide your text layers, okay? And you could just rename that your um, text so that you know that you've got your gradient fill layer and you've got your text layer. 